Welcome back to more Disco Elysium. In this episode, I am going to be doing a lot of cleanup work. I'm going to be talking to a lot of people I've already talked to, making sure I'm not missing anything or any other secrets, dialogues, white checks, anything of that sort. I want to be able to pick up a lot of things. I also want to go ahead and get started on a thought. I have one final thought slot and I decided I've been very protective about which ones I go for, but I realized, you know what? If I don't get a good outcome, I can always just pay a point to remove one. But, let me see, I have so many to choose from. But I feel like everything's building up to something huge. So I kind of want to go with this, the Cop of the Apocalypse. You woke up in a hotel room and started rambling about the end of the world. It's not your normal everyday doom crying either. Something truly colossal is approaching the gloaming, the culling, the bloodletting of unimaginable proportions. Until now, you've been pleasantly vague about the precise nature of this cataclysm. No more! Put the bloodletting on the burner and really figure out what's threatening the fragile physical reality you just found yourself in. I know I already read this, but it's been a long time and since I'm now going to internalize it, I thought it would be appropriate. Let me get out of here. You know what I want to do? I want to go call the prince precinct and let him know I found my gun. I think I might be able to do that. Let's see. Inside. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Alice, this is Firewalker. Reconnect me to the 41st. Right. Please hold. Then four, come in. Uh, Firewalker, over. I have successfully located my 9mm Villiers pistol. It's on me now and I won't lose it again. Then four, sir, roger that, and very glad to hear it. I will make relevant changes to the report. Nice, I got five experience points out of that, so I'll take it. 10-10, over. Roger that, 10-10, over and out. Okay. Uh, let me talk with this guy. I haven't talked with him in a long time. Maybe something opened up with him. Oh, look. It's the cop who turned me into a bad person. Oh yeah, I forgot I got him to rat out his partner here. What are you hauling anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. Relax. He's merely joking. You're under arrest. Ha! No, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice, clean business. This haul of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grodd and the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. So nothing illegal then? Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. That's your machine behind you? This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6? Yeah, these lorries are pretty neat. Neat. For carrying large quantities of cargo a long distance. These found tracksuits need to find their way to the kids way out in Wamrao and Loran Bird somehow. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. Right, I had another question. He crosses his arms and turns his head away. A disappointed look in his eyes see that opened up a check and i'm getting paranoid because maybe i'm missing a ton of checks everywhere by not picking the right combinations so this is this is a hard one man empathy four three percent because i'm getting a minus four because i forced him to out the lady driver that's all for now bye let me see what i can do about empathy i don't know if i have much empathy stuff here we go, I got these glasses. Alright, empathy shoes. Wow, he looks really goofy in these pants and those shoes. Anything else? I'm gonna need all the help I can get to pass this check with that minus four already on it. That's a minus empathy, okay. Probably going to use some substances as well. All right, here we go. We got empathy on that. Let's 
It's a minus sympathy. Okay, so my empathy is at a plus three right now. That's pretty decent. It at least almost offsets the other stuff. And let me see. What's going to give me empathy here? The speed, I think. Let me use the Pyrulidon. Or actually, I think I want to use the speed because... Nah, let's use the Pyrulidon. And again, for whatever reason, you got to do this twice before it appears here. A little bug in the game. Heal my health. Oh, look. It's the cop who turned me into a bad person. So we're at 28%. Let's try it. What do you see in his eyes? Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Man, you look sad. What's going on with you? I'm okay, man. Just... The jams got me down. The fumes, the chemical rainbows, the tarpaulin stretched on the frames and the dull engines off. The man recedes into his days of words. Maybe the full-on direct approach wasn't correct. Damn. It's tricky business looking into someone's eyes and not doing it wrong. That's all for now. So I'm a little worried that I'm going to be spending a lot of points to be able to pass this white check because the percentage is still pretty low. But let me... Well, I have... I have five points to spend. Let me put one in there. Oh, look. It's 42%. The me into a bad person. Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Hey, Tommy. Spill the beans. What's troubling you? Man, nothing's troubling me. Just the usual Loreman tropes and hopes, the road and the rhymes. This jam ain't helping either. He looks around. That all the beans you got, Tommy. Damn, it really is hard to talk man to man. That's all for now. Dang it, so I'm gonna have to put another point in here. If I have, if I fail at this time, I might put this off until a little later. I don't want to dump all my points because I don't know what other checks might be ahead, you know? So let me throw another one in there. Oh look. Fifty-eight percent. Come on. A bad person. Ease into oh, it. Oh, come on. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. My man, I want to know about your soul. Cool, cool. We all want to know each other, know each other's woes and all. But people, man, they have slippery souls. Just like that, he slips out of your reach. It is possible the yelling didn't help. That's all for now. Bye. Ah. Uh, yeah, I got three points. I'm going to do it. I'm into this. I'm in too deep. I'm in too deep. I'm in too deep, guys. Oh, look. It's the cop who turned me into a bad person. 72. In his eyes, an unfamiliar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. Familiar how? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest. Down the street that goes beyond the horizon. The road continues for miles, flowing together with other roads, turning into causeways or bridges, ending suddenly in dead ends, or ramping up or down highways. It forms a crisscross pattern across the land. Where does it lead? Above the Jamrock Quarter, in the form of a raised motorway, and then the never-ending sprawl of Forberg, high above buildings, new and old, the air filled with the rumble of motor engines. Further. To the old, old south. To the farthest outskirts of Revachon. Through the checkered fields of farmland. Upstream to the river Esperance. Past Mont Martin. The border approaches. What's beyond the border? You cannot see. It's out of the city. Up ahead, the mist blocks all sight. A gale blows across your cheeks. It is cold. Before you stands a tall lorry driver with sad eyes. What's in the southwest? Excuse me? He emerges from the reverie. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Really? You can tell me. Man, I don't know what to say. 
Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? Is that what it is? This feeling? No, it's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. No, I feel hunted. Hunted? By what? By a shadowy figure known only to me as the ex-something. An ex-wife? The pain burns in your chest, radiating. The crown of altar is on fire. I'm going to heal my health here. It followed me into this world when I awoke. I think it may be a planner hunter. Planner hunter? Wow, that sounds really bad. I hope that doesn't happen to my marriage. Let's see what I want to say. First, what is marriage? Man, who even knows? It's like a legal contract, but also a bond between spirits. Everyone is different. That's all I can say. It's definitely going to happen to your marriage, too. Maybe it is. We're doing our best to keep ours together. I hope it's not, but you never know. Thanks for the dark words, I guess. I'll make sure they don't come true. It's good talking to someone. I know it wasn't easy to say those things, so... I hope you find your way through your own troubles. He smiles. That's all for now. Bye. I don't know how I feel about this. I dropped a lot of points into that. Into that white chick. How many do I have left? Three? Two? I only have two left. Oh, no. Alright, but I'm caught up on the white checks. I don't think there are any checks that I need to do. I think what I want to do now is I want to go into the library. There were a lot of books that I could buy. And now that I do have some decent money, I might want to buy some. Let's go in. I also have to talk to the librarian about the... What was it called? The void? What was the term for the void? God, it's going to drive me nuts. Let me start here at the top corner and buy all the books. Wait a second, wait a second. Looks like Guillaume Lemillon. That hair poster. Interesting. Okay, let me start here. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. All right, I want to buy the medicinal purposes of the pale. Oh my god! It's like you read my mind. I was searching for the word. The pale. That's the word I was looking for. I need to talk to the librarian about the pale. Indeed. Something about that book does seem to have spoken to you. Well, I hope it contains what you're looking for. Let me leave. Um, the map. I don't think I can buy anything else here on the maps. Several maps have the maps look old. Yeah, nothing there. Let me take a look at this bookshelf. Shelves full of biographies of famous people, whoever they are. I'm interested in that Greatest Innocence book. A true cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. I'm gonna leave. And I got this one here. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposedly stalwart Vespertine detective Dick Mullen. Let me look through the display. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, 
Would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Uh, sure thing. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart, a killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder Any more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? All right, so that opened up a check too. It's reaction speed, but even though it's 92%, I'm still going to look in my inventory for reaction speed items because I cannot afford to lose another point. So let's look for reaction speed. Let me put my conceptualization stuff back on too. Here we go, reaction speed. That should take me up to 97% actually. So I might just go for it. Let me put this on though, the conceptualization. And my guy's looking real hipster like. Shells filled yeah, the crime novels. Who is Dick a Mullen? Supposedly stalwart. Vespers, your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? Mistaken identity? A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic Hard Boiled Phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Hmm, why does this speak to me? Could it be the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals? That's probably right. I'm a complicated guy full of contradictions. Then this is the book for you. I want to buy this Dick Mullen novel. Mmm, of course. Such violence and immorality. Uh I mean, enjoy. All right, let me leave. Let me please get rid of this hat. I hate it. Put this one back on. I don't really have any hat that I'm particularly fond of. I guess the Dick Mullen hat. Why don't I put that on since we're talking about Dick Mullen here? Okay, let me see. I can probably buy the Man from Hemdall book. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundal somewhere. So I'm down to 28 bucks. It's going to cost me 18 to buy both of these. I might as well. I want to buy the Hemdallman book. Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. And then I want to buy Man from Hemdall and the Devil Woman. It is a bestseller for a reason. And then let's see what I can buy here. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. So I cannot afford to buy either of these. So what I'm thinking is... Um, what if I read the books that I bought and then maybe I can sell them to the pawn shop and get a little bit of money back? So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of text to read these books. So I might try to read like one per episode or something. So let's see what I got here. I got all these books. I kind of want to read the Dick Mullen one first because I'm wearing the Dick Mullen hat. Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Ad Identity. Another Dick Mullen book. That woefully misrepresents the nature of police work. In this one, our detective returns from a trip, having successfully solved one case only to embark on another. Does he finally face the taxing nature of his occupation? No. He doesn't even look like a normal officer of the law. In your hand, you hold Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. The brittle paperback feels fragile to the touch. Examine the cover. The cover features a pastiche of different scenes. In the foreground, a man in a dark overcoat clutches a pistol to his chest. Rising up behind him 
are two silhouettes wrapped in a passionate embrace. The tagline reads, Detective Dick Mullen must prove his innocence after an old friend is murdered by someone who looks just like Dick Mullen. That seems to sum up the premise nicely. Needless to say, it violates nearly every RCM regulation for a detective to investigate a murder in which he is a suspect. Are you really reading that, detective? I really need to know who this Dick Mullen guy is. Good luck finding it. He's not much of a character, I think you'll find. Just a stand-in for the reader. The point is for the reader to feel like they're solving the crime, along with Dick Mullen. A crude narrative convention, but no less effective for it. Start reading. The story opens with a knock at the door. Detective Dick Mullen is greeted by an old friend, Charlie Spillane, who's come to Mullen to ask a favor on this dark and cold night. Spillane needs Mullen to drive him in from Vespa to a small town along the Insulindian coast. Despite his friend's apparent agitation, Mullen does as he's asked, then returns home where he passes out drunk, as he does most nights. An extremely unprofessional and hurtful stereotype that's offensive to all upstanding officers of the law, but also extremely accurate in your case. Look, I can't judge. Two days later, Mullen is arrested by the Vespa police and charged with the murder of Charlie Spillane. At his interrogation, Mullen learns that Charlie Spillane was shot in a bar in the very town Mullen dropped him off in by a man matching Mullen's description. Desperate to clear his name, Mullen manages to convince the Vespa police to release him for three days so that Mullen may solve his friend's murder and prove his innocence. The cops released their prime murder suspect so he can find the real killer? Are you shitting me? What's the matter, detective? The lieutenant turns to you with a start. I don't know who's running this shit, but I get the feeling they aren't experts on homicide investigations. The lieutenant shrugs, resigned to the idea that his profession will rarely, if ever, be accurately represented in art and literature. They're not shitting you, detective. This is what the writers think passes for police procedure. Okay, so Mullen didn't do it. Of course Mullen didn't do it. That's the whole premise of the book. Anyway, Mullen returns to the seaside bar where Spillane was murdered and meets a beautiful, mysterious woman named Diana De Nerva. Nice, a dame. And not just any dame. She's truly one in a million. A knockout whose mind is as dangerous as her curves. But she's got a secret. Sounds like my kind of woman. She's any man's kind of woman. According to this book. Are you sure about that? Something about her gives you a bad feeling. What kind of secret is she hiding? You couldn't handle a woman like that. Look at yourself. You couldn't even handle your... Stop. Don't say it. Don't say what? Nothing. Forget it. Go back to your story. Now it's getting interesting. Deneuve reveals that she was Belaine's lover and that he was mixed up with a local amphetamine smuggling operation. As soon as Mullen begins pulling at strings, the whole conspiracy begins to unravel. Not only is the local police captain in on the amphetamine ring, so is the son of a powerful politician and a strung out art collector named Torvald, each of whom has his own reasons for wanting Spillane dead. Tell me about the corrupt police captain. Outwardly, the old police captain is a real law and order crypto-fascist, a barrel-chested man who's beaten his share of suspects to pulp. But he's also dirty and increasingly paranoid that someone's going to expose his role in the drug ring. He would certainly have the motive and the means, but the captain walks with a noticeable limp from an old war injury. Is it possible that he was able to conceal it long enough to commit the murder? I want to hear about the politician's son. A typical privileged twat. In all likelihood, he's just in over his head. He does bear a personal grudge against Belaine, though. A former prosecutor who nearly brought down his father's administration. The kid doesn't exactly have Dick Mullen's manly build, but he is the correct height. And while interrogating him at his home, 
Mullen did notice a certain overcoat that looked suspiciously like his own. What was that about an art collector? Torvald, the art collector, is a strung out mess. Frankly, it's hard to imagine him holding a pistol steady enough to actually hit someone, let alone plug them three times in the chest the way Ospelain got did. That said, Torvald and Spillane have a long history, and while interrogating him, Mullen discovers that Torvald was once involved with Diana Deneuve. Could it be that this is all over a sordid love triangle? Okay, let's get on with the story. One evening, Diana Deneuve comes to Mullen's hostel room in tears. The two of them drink half a bottle of vodka, and soon they're seeking comfort in each other's arms. Yes, comfort and pleasure. The warmth of another human's touch. The burning taste of liquor on her full, sweet lips. Well, that testimony won't be admissible any longer. How does Mullen expect to solve the murder if he's sleeping with the witnesses? The man's a prosecutor's nightmare. Solving a murder counts for nothing if all the evidence gets thrown out in court over police misconduct. Nice. Get it, Mullen. As the two lovers share a post-coital cigarette, Diana Deneuve turns to Mullen and says, By the way, Dick, there was something else I meant to tell you. I love you. Whatever it is, Mullen never hears the words. A blow to the base of his skull knocks him out cold instantly. Fuck. When Mullen comes to, Deneuve is dead on the hostel bed next to him. To make matters worse, his clothes are covered with her blood. Double fuck. Mullen trashes his blood-stained clothes and flees the hostel, knowing it's only a matter of hours before the cops discover Deneuve's body, if they haven't been tipped off already. Fleeing a crime scene, destroying evidence, even if Detective Mullen didn't commit the murder, he should be facing years behind bars. The heat is on. If Dick Mullen can't solve both murders before the cops catch up to him, He's going away for life. Can you solve the case before the cops close in? Wait, I've got some questions first. What is it, detective? Why does everyone close to Dick Mullen wind up dead? It's a dangerous line of work, but somebody has to do it. That's why Dick Mullen never lets anyone get too close. Why did Dick Mullen become a detective in the first place? There was never a time when he wasn't a detective. He was born a detective. Was I not born a detective? For a moment, you cease to read the story on the page and see the book for what it is. A collection of brittle, cheaply printed pages held together by glue made from the hooves of horses. From nowhere, you hear the screech of sneakers on a waxed floor and you feel the burn of rope against your hands. Are these figments of some other life? You won't find the answers you're looking for here, in other words. Why bother solving crimes when the world is so evil? Is it really so evil, detective? Yep, it's pretty fucking evil. Then, why are you still here? Because I need to solve this case, not for anyone else's sake, for me. What are you trying to prove, exactly? And what will change if you do manage to prove it? But then, what does this book know? It's just a poorly made piece of pulp garbage made to be consumed and discarded. I don't have any more questions. I figured it all out. So, who did it, detective? Who killed Charlie Spillane and Deanna Deneur? Hmm. I feel like the dirty police captain, because he has a track record of violence. He's got the paranoia. He's got a lot to lose. He doesn't want to be embarrassed by being outed. So I'm going to go with the dirty police captain. Could be. Who knows? Only one way to find out. Finish the book. You begin furiously flipping through pages. Even as you know these books follow a series of well-worn tropes, you find yourself completely engrossed. You're turning pages so fast, you don't even notice the ancient spine coming unglued. You try to grab the pages as they come loose, but your fingers aren't quick enough. They're gone. Dozens of pages scatter across the floor. The last fifth or so of the book seems to have been lost. 
It's possible that you could gather and reassemble the pages, but it would take way too long. Gah, now I'll never know. Too bad, detective. If it's any consolation, the resolution is almost never very satisfying. And on that note, perhaps we should get back to making sense of our own case? Last year, more than 71% of murders in Rivershall went unsolved. In Rivershall West, that number was closer to 85%. In your hand, you hold four-fifths of Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. No, really? I can't pick up the pages? I feel invested now. I'm gonna put the book away. Wow, that sucks. Maybe there's a white check in there if I pick the correct options. Maybe there's a check in there if I pick the right options to maybe put everything back together. I don't know. Let me talk to the people in here. I haven't talked to them in a while. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? She smiles warmly. Okay, good. We got we got hope. We got hope. Little girl, help! My Dick Mullen book ripped before I could get to the end. Do you know what happens? Which book was it, sir? Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I haven't read that one yet. I wish I could help you. Dang it. Okay, bye. See you around, Annette. Useless girl. Maybe the librarian. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Uh, this Dick Mullen book fell apart before I could get to the end. Do you have another copy? Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Some of these old paperbacks just don't have the durability. I would be happy to sell you another one, but unfortunately, it's the last copy we had in stock. No. No. Oh, well. Placence, I have something to tell you. I found the actual source of doom. What do you mean, the actual source? Are you talking about the third presence? She clutches her pendant anxiously. She remembers. Good. No, not presence. Absence. No, not the presence. The third absence. Absence? I imagine things must be rather bleak for you to return to me. Tell me, what have you found? She gasps, then after collecting herself. My investigation has led me to discover a 2mm anthroponetic hole in reality. That's the source of doom both in the commercial area and in Martinez. Uh, a what? She wasn't expecting this. At least not the word entrepreneurial. A tiny hole in reality. It may be connected with the pale, an origin point of sorts. It would explain why historically so many things have ended in failure here in Martinez. Ma'am, what he's saying is true. We found an entrepreneurial anomaly in the small Pinewood church down the coast. I don't mean to be an alarmist, and more research is needed, but it's not looking good. But, but that's not in any of the ancient texts. How am I supposed to protect my bookstore from that? Tell her the truth. It's out of her hands. You can't protect it. Not against the pale. Close up shop and try to get as far away from this thing as possible. Close the shop? But it's all I have. No, there must be a way. Especially now that Annette is settling in at school again. She's finally making friends in this place. No, we can't leave Martinez. We can't. She looks at her daughter quietly studying in the corner of the shop. Thank you for your help in any case. You're welcome back here anytime. Farewell for now, book peddler. Okay, let me go talk to the dice maker about the pail as well. Ah, the barbell. My old friend, the barbell. Looks like Kim wants to talk to me. It's dark. The lieutenant states the obvious. And the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. Flashlights go in hand? Yes, you might even call it a feature of the universe that you need to hold tools to use them. That makes no sense at all. I'm sorry the fundamental laws of the universe don't seem to agree with you, detective. But the fact remains that it's too dark to see in here without the flashlight. So, come on. We've got work to do. Some areas are inaccessible without your flashlight. After you've acquired it, go to your inventory 
and equip it in a held slot to continue exploring. Thank you, tutorial agent. All right, let me put on my flashlight, I guess. Let's go. Oh, I had something here. Poor animals. No rest for their bodies after death. Ah, the taxidermy. Wait a minute, what's all this? Have I been here? The floorboards creak. I didn't really explore this area. Maybe I did, I don't know. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? I think I found the actual source of the curse. You mean the curse that I'm spared of because I live outside its immediate reach? It's a bit more complicated than I first thought it would be. I'm listening. There's a two millimeter hole in reality located in a church on the other side of the canal. I think it may be related to the pale. Excuse me? A two millimeter hole in reality? This can't be true. She sits up, visibly agitated. I'm afraid it is, ma'am. Sona Lukanen killed her. The former lead programmer of Fortress Accident made the discovery. Sona is involved in this? She appears to take this in while the chatter from her headphones continue unabated. So it's even worse than I thought. It's not just the commercial area that's cursed. It's the entire world. She looks outside the window where daylight has filled the yard. It's what I have preached the whole time and no one listened. A curse is something superstitious, but a two millimeter hole in reality? We all know what it means. It's pale. She gives you a rueful smile. In any case, thank you for stopping by. It's good to have an answer, even if I can't claim to understand it fully. Alright, let me leave. Okay, so that's that. Very good. Let me go through here. I'm going to go out the other exit, and I'm just going to hold my tab key down in case I find anything else. Yeah, nothing else. Just always good to reinvestigate some areas with higher stat points and such. Sometimes new things open up. Let me go back in here, see if there's anything. I'm not going to interact with this. I've already interacted with that. Just kind of running around and seeing if any little thought bubbles pop up. Yeah. Uh, what was down here again? Not much. Okay. Let's get out of here. Give up. You'll never find the answer. There's no other copy of Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity here. But why? Because that's how the world works. Some stories never get finished. You shouldn't expect there to be a tidy, satisfying ending. But... What if you never find out how your story ends? There's got to be a way to solve this. There isn't. If only you had more time, more resources. Who knows what you could have come up with? Maybe if there had been more money and less speed. Or more speed. Or that, yes. Either way, you might have been able to come up with an answer. But not like this. Hang on, you can do this. Use your imagination. You know who the suspects are. Just make it up. So, who killed Charles Belay and Diana Denuva, detective? Just fucking pick one. Fuck you, book. It was Dick Mullen. It still doesn't make sense. But who cares? Yes, Dick Mullen. The famous detective killed his best friend and the dame he just nailed in cold blood. But why'd he do it? Unclear. Doesn't matter. The choice has been made. You caught the criminal. It was Dick Mullen all along. Who's the real detective now? That's right. It's you. Rest easy tonight, real detective. 
Alright, semi-satisfying conclusion, semi-satisfying conclusion. Let me go to the pawn shop, let me see if I can sell the fourth-fifth of that book. Try to get a little bit more cash. Let me go over here, let me look at that tree again. Sorry, my dog started barking and going ham. What was I doing again? Looking at- oh, what's this? The Delta Logistics Company truck stands here waiting, reflecting white light from the courtyard behind it. You knew it would be here, blocking the gate. Are there people in there? Yes. People hard at work at their desks. They can barely tell if it's day or night anymore, because the lights in the building are so uniform and bright. Who knows when they'll come out? What keeps them motivated? Irony. They're yuppies masquerading as Mazovians. Or was it Mazovians masquerading as yuppies? Even they get confused sometimes. Out here in poverty-stricken Martinez. Why is the light so strange? Because this is a place of mystery. Hey Kim, let's try and get into that courtyard. That's where idiot Doom Spiral said we'd find the cocaine skull. A mythical cocaine skull could hardly be of any consequence to our ongoing investigation. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses. You can come back to it on your own when we are done with this case. Gonna let it go for now, I guess. Alright. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was going to the pawn shop, I think. Let me go to the pawn shop. See if I can sell that book. What is this? Have I used this before? Well, a very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding toward you. A giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hyeondal burning. Oh, we're going to sniff the t-shirt. Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing is okay, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What is he talking about? That's a rad man from Hyundal t-shirt you've got there. Hell yeah, man. I don't usually carry printed tees, but this one was just pure exemplar. We have a lot in common. I'm a big fan of Man from Hyundal, too. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I'm a fan, but I do think the Hyundalaman saga is an integral part of our shared reality. Most people don't think that the man from Hyeomdao really existed, but they're wrong. What did you mean the man from Hyeomdao was real? I mean, even if the man from Hyeomdao didn't exist before the adventure novels, the stories have made it so that he has. It's simple, really. Okay. He sounds incredulous. You sound skeptical. It's not that complicated. All that's required is a more robust understanding of cause and effect. Besides, I've been to Kotla, though not quite as far north as the Hjelmdal, and watched northern lights travel across the sky. Very unique energetic tides there. His theory isn't exactly incoherent, but its logic does suggest some unusual neural activity. Interesting. Very... Very unique energies, indeed. Geomagnetic ley lines, one might even say. How much are you selling this t-shirt for? Two real. That's dirt cheap. Couldn't you just give it to me for free then? But, why? Perhaps I could repay you in some other way. Our dealing goods, not services. Okay, I've thought it over and I want to buy the t-shirts. So I would get one physical instrument, one shivers, minus two authority, but that is a bitching t-shirt, so I'm gonna buy it. Welcome to Hyeongdal, officer. 
let's take a look. The man from Hyamdal is standing in front of a burning village, dual wielding his ever present Svalhanders. His muscles look ready to burst out of the two dimensional print and into your three dimensional life. Spectacular. Okay. Let me put my flashlight away. I forgot I can't talk to him with a flashlight, but I can with a sword and a gun in my hand. Can't I just rob the guy? You know? It's like I got a hand, gun, and a sword. It's like just stick him up, you know? I'm taking the shirt for free. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I have something else to sell. Sure. Let me have a look. Um, let me access the pawn menu. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Uh, okay, so I can sell the antique Belmagrave rifle. I don't want to sell anything because I don't know if I'm going to use them or not, you know? I just want to sell the, the books that I've already read, but it looks like you cannot sell books. The speakers are 30, and then this thing is 50, so there's a lot of potential income here, but I don't think I'm going to sell anything right now. Another time, pal. Okay, let's get out of here. Sorry, sometimes I'm trying to exit out of the dialogue op options and I press escape and it brings up the menu. I apologize about that. Just reflex. Okay, so where do I want to go from here is what I'm thinking. Let's go to... Oh, you know where we could go? Let's go to Gary's house. I wonder if there's anything new there. Let's go to Gary's house. What is this? The musty smell of a potato cellar in the spring emanates from the air vent. Let's head on over to Gary's place. The sea breeze carries more than salt. Meat, not rotten, not fresh, grilled. Interesting. Let me talk to Kuno S. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep? Apparently, she doesn't like people standing behind her back. Pigs come to take me out? Trying to snuff me out? Are you sleeping right now? Don't get fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. She hisses. All right, all right, Kunois. Yeah, here's Gary's apartment. Let's see. You hear the sound of running water. Someone's washing dishes. Let's go in. The door is closed again. Nothing to do here anymore. You hear someone inside. Walk in from room to room. Whoever lives here must be back home. Really? I can't go in there? Oh, well. Let me check out the apartments. The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. More old bullet holes. Half a century at least. From the revolution. Let me examine closer. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. This is bad mojo, man! Fucking horrible mojo! The end draws now! Your chest feels tight looking at them. It's closing in, caving in, ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay there? The lieutenant's sudden voice cuts like a blade, bringing you out of the stupor. Gonna breathe out sharply. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You were looking pale there for a second. What are you looking at? These bullet holes look like the bullet holes we saw before. Bullet holes generally look the same, so... probably. But you're right. More old bullet holes from the revolution. He leans in to inspect the wall. Man, how many people got shot during that revolution? Plenty. The streets ran red with blood. Dust swirled above the ruins. The pressure change from artillery fire ripped people apart in the top floors of the building above you. Okay. Yeah, let me go in here. I kind of want to talk to the landlady again. She seems like she knows all the gossip around town, you know? I feel like she might have something else for me.
Give me a moment. I have a few questions about those apartments. Ask away, policeman. Why is there a hole in the wall in the abandoned apartments? Some lunatic lost his mind. All kinds of morons pass through these halls. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? Tell me about the man who lives here at the end of the hallway, Uno de Reiter. I don't want to talk about the waiters. The cleaning lady mutters. She starts digging for something in her pockets. Why not? Addicts. All of them. And sometimes I hear them screaming. She winces. They don't like me cleaning behind their door. Think I'm listening on their fights. It was dirtier there. After the janitor's closet. She avoids the end of the hallway. We saw unpaid utility bills. Aren't they going to be evicted? No one likes them in this building. It's only because of the kids they haven't been thrown out. I don't like talking about those people. She looks down the hallway. What can you tell me about Cindy? The artiste. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still... She leans on her broom. She leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say for others. That's all, thanks. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something into her handkerchief. Thanks, I'm off. Speaking of Cindy, I might want to go talk to her again. Anything else in these areas? Doesn't look like it. Let me go up and talk to Cindy. Officers, have you come to admire my mural? I found some drugs in the coal room of yours. They just might be rough stuff. If you take the ride, you'd be wise to buckle your little pig belly up. The neurons must be on fire. The heat creating waves and ripples in all she sees. Above all, in her painting. Does it make you see everything all art-like? You really think I need to be high to see the world as art? Poor, unimaginative piggy. How I wouldn't want to have your peepers. To hell with the art part, man. It's all about the high anyway. Yeah, let me go back to this option. They just... Her neurons must be on fire. The heat creating waves and ripples in all she sees. Above all, in her painting. I like bumpy rides. Know where I can get some more? We apologize. But we're currently not buying the entrapment you're selling. Please call again later. Thank you. She smiles at her own joke. If you're really interested, then I'm sorry. But I don't do anti-radiation drugs anymore. So I don't know where to get them. Where did you get these then? From a guy on Buggy Street, Porta Rosa. Go there after midnight. And you can get all kinds of funny things. Veterans of the people's pile selling their stash. She immediately regrets telling you, but it's too late. Damn me and my affinity to farm animals, she's probably thinking. She hopes the information is useless. I think there was one more option here, so I'm going to blast to it. They just... The neurons must be on fire. The heat creating waves and ripples in all she sees. Above all in her painting i'm gonna have to take you in kid for possession of drugs in which case they're not mine and i have several witnesses who will corroborate my statement fine catch you later cindy okay so i am down to one health with only one use left so i do need to go buy more over at frit that is going to be important let me go out this way i think it'll take me a little bit closer Alright, let's roll all the way to Fritz. It's a long way. Should have gotten someone who was a little closer, but what are you gonna do? I 
Frit is getting good business for me. I am certainly giving them a lot of money. I did steal their raincoat though, so you know. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles. Okay, here. I hope so. Okay. That's that. Guess let me go ahead and heal up. Very good. Actually, I think this is a decent stopping point for this episode. In the next one, I'm going to start making my way over to the Fisherman Village and try to pick up anything I might have missed over there. And of course, we'll continue the investigation. Let me take a look at the journal. So in terms of tasks, this all looks pretty clean. It was a mess earlier, but not too bad now. Offer figurines to Dolores Day. Still need to ask about Ruby in the village, so I'm probably going to talk to the homeless people. Determine where the shot came from. I still need to check the boardwalk and the island. Find one more armor piece. This, I feel like there's nothing I can do. It's just whenever the time will come, the necktie will let me know. And I need to find the murder weapon. So it all looks pretty decent. Look at all these tasks I've already done. Look at all these. Dang, I've done a lot of stuff. I did not realize I did all of this stuff. Whoa. Okay. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the series. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by the Renaissance Gaming Monastery. I hope you join our community on Discord and Twitter. These videos are produced with a lot of hard work and love. If you think they're worth a dollar, I'd be grateful for your contribution. You can send a thanks donation or become a member on YouTube. You can also support through PayPal, Patreon, or even with cryptocurrency. All links are in the description. See you on the next video.